welcome once again to Arab Four Ministries International. And we are now in the last stages before we come to Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. So today, basically, I want to really look at the philosophical view of the birth of Jesus Christ. And we want to look at the realities of today's world. Now, Christ was born on Christmas Day and he was born for a specific reason and a specific purpose. And that he would come into this world to fulfill the purpose of the first Adam. He was the son of God, but he was God in the flesh. He came in the likeness of flesh and in the likeness of sin. That humanity could identify with a person like themselves. And God in the flesh lived his life by example that those who follow him would be a beacon of light to every living single person on the earth. Those who desire to follow him were considered disciples. And I want to talk today about discipleship and the really meaning as a disciple. A disciple is someone who decided that they are going to follow Christ and worship him in spirit and in truth. And Christ had told his disciples long before he had ascended into heaven that I want you to go out there in the highways and the byways, heal the sick, drive out demons, cast out dead, uh, and heal the, uh, raise the dead, sorry. And there were those who were victorious at it, and then there were those who weren't victorious at it. And that is an issue we want to look at today because Christ had given us the keys and the power to exhibit these things on earth, that his name be edified, glorified, and magnified in this earth. When we fail to follow the commands that Christ had given us, we fail in our authority, we fail in dominion, and we fail in power. And God has said, and make it absolutely clear, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Right? So therefore, you as a disciple of God are obligated to represent the will of God in earth as it is in heaven, to demonstrate the will of God in earth as it is in heaven, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to bind, to loose, to deliver, to heal. These are the powers that God gave to us. But we cannot do this task effectively if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit. We in, our, we in ourselves are weaklings. Our temples is just temples. But unless these temples be engaged and equipped and filled with the Holy Spirit, then we are nothing more but sounding brass and tingling cymbals. We can show that the demon all be like, no one is coming out. We can say, be healed in Jesus' name. They're going to get healed because you in yourself can't do anything. But we rely solely upon the Holy Spirit to show up inside of us that we can demonstrate the will of God in earth as it is in heaven. Though no man is drawn unto the Spirit, unto the Father, except true by the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ himself. So, we got to come to the realization that we need to fuse our spirit with Jesus Christ's spirit. It's the only way we're going to draw heavenly strength. It's the only way we're going to be able to achieve those things Christ said we shall achieve. Christ said we should even do greater things than him when he, here was, when he was here on earth. Is it just in numbers? Certainly yes, but also in quality. We shall do greater things. And we can't walk today in this time and season as weaklings and call ourselves representatives in the body of Christ. If we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar kind of a people, 
then the peculiarities about us must be able to exhibit and manifest the will of God. Our lives should be so enlightening to others that they would want to gravitate towards us to do the same things that we are doing. One may call it magic, but there's, no th there's nothing magical about the Holy Spirit. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is in dominion. He is in power. All power is on to him. But we reflect that power when we are in coordinates with him. When we walk hand in hand, when we walk with that spirit of dominion and authority. So I'm here to tell you today that as we walk out of this December 2022 and enter January 2023, I want to equip you with the keys of power and authority and dominion that you can establish the will of God in earth as it is in heaven. Now, I want you to know that there are those who will tell you, you have to go to college and you have to go to Bible school to learn this and to learn that. There's one thing the Bible colleges and Bible schools can't do, and that's to equip you with the Holy Spirit. Every man must present his body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. When you do that and allow Christ to come in you, no college can provide you with that. No college, no college can equip you with that. When you become a follower and a disciple of Christ, you become a messenger of the living King. And the messages from God has to reflect a verbalized word from God himself. It can't be nothing that you make up. You can't read and study the Bible good enough to bring a message from God. You can put together all articles in the Bible, it's fine. But the verbalized word of God has to be spoken through the Holy Spirit through your mouth itself. So, it's good to be a good biblical historian. Show yourself a proof. Show yourself delighted in the Lord. I mean, the, the devil, he knows the Bible too. Probably better than you. But the reality is, God is saying to us, I want you to worship me in spirit and truth. Because when you establish a chamber of privacy, when you establish a chamber of secrecy between you and him, he shall give you open rewards. And this is the beautiful thing with Christ. He said, I don't want you to be like the hypocrite does, who stand in the synagogues, praying in the street corners, appearing as fasted and, and appearing as holy. He don't want that. He want a chamber of secrecy. A secret dwelling place where total intimacy can be established in your life by the Holy Spirit himself. These are the keys God wants to equip you with. When you leave your home on mornings, you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's not just you that walking, it's not just you that talking, or it's just you that breathing, but it's the Holy Spirit himself breathing deep inside of you. And when Christ said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. There has to be a hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And as we go through this year, we're going to eat all the fancy foods and drinking the fancy wines. I come to let you know that man can't live by bread alone, but only by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. The word of God itself is food to your belly and marrow to your bones. I know everyone get excited and want to eat all fancy things for holidays that they probably ate all through the year. But I want you to feast this time on the word of God. Spend a little time praying and fasting to the Holy Spirit. Be filled today with a new wine. You know, Christ said, you can't pour new wine into old wine's skin. The potency is too strong. And if you pour new wine into old wine's skin, it will burst. But when you prepare your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before the living king, he will implant himself inside of you. He will come inside of you and behold, you become a new creation in the body of Christ. 
a new creation. The things of the world are temporary. They will have a short existence. You yourself have a short existence. But while you are in existence, just remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. This is a season that you take vacation off from work to celebrate with your families and everyone celebrate for some of the wrong reasons. Some get drunk on all kinds of spirits and alcohol. Sure, it is not drunk on new wine or the Holy Spirit like on the day of Pentecost. But I'm saying to you today that let your life in 2023 reflect a new person a person who had been transformed by the Holy Spirit. A new person who came to accept Christ as their personal Savior. Hence, duplicating the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Demonstrating by power and authority. Your sisters, your brothers, your workmates, they're all entangled with bondage and confusion and misery in their lives and they want a fresh word of deliverance. They want someone to just step over and whisper to them, look, God is love. Accept him into your life. He can transform your life. There's no pay raise. There's no pay check big enough to take the place of Jesus Christ. There's no promotions big enough to be greater than Jesus Christ. These things are temporary. You can have a job today, you can lose it tomorrow. But when you have Christ in your life permanently, there's no losing. It's all winning. And Christ said at this stage, I will prepare a table in the presence of the enemy. He will anoint your head with oil and surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. God is saying your blessings will be a cup overflowing with love and joy, peace and happiness and mercy. This is what God is saying to you in this time and season. Yes, you live your life all through 2022 and backward, and you never got the time to accept Christ in your life. You never get the time to experience Christ in your life. You never get the time to experience the joy and peace and happiness and love and mercy and compassion and grace that God had bestowed upon you. You never got time to even give God thanks for it. But God is saying this time that only if you can reach out, open your heart, I will come in and communicate with you. He will commune with you and you with him. He will transform your mind. And Christ said, blessed are the pure heart for they shall see our God. And when your heart is transformed, when your mind is transformed, you become a new creation in the body of Christ. Walking as a victor and not a victim to the depths of society. Not a victim to the laws of the land. Not a victim to dark forces. Not a victim to Satan and his antics. Not a victim to nothing. Because who the spirit set free is free indeed. There's no weapon that can prosper against you. Your life will be full of joy and happiness. Even when bad things happen to you, you will call it joy because you can feel the presence of the loving, caring, merciful God there with you. In all your circumstances in life, God will be standing next to you. And this is the time in your life where you can't, you can't make it before Christ. You ain't going nowhere before Christ. The devil is all around every day. He's working hard. Confusion, misery, conflict, turmoil, chaos. In schools, in colleges, in the workplace, in the community, your household, families at each other's throat, workmates at each other's throat, fighting and struggling for promotion and pay raises and telling the bosses what they want to hear and lying and they're contriving and doing everything that is bad. The world becomes a place of misery and confusion. It's in turmoil. It's encapsulated with the darkness of sin. And the nucleus of it is Satan himself. 
come to let you know there's freedom in the spirit of God, there's love in the spirit of God, there's grace, there's mercy, there's compassion. The evolution of life eternally starts with Jesus Christ. The walk and the path, understanding what Christ meant in your life is there for you. And it's everlasting and everlasting that walk with Christ, that life, that new life speaks volume. You know that you are living not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And you see beyond what this, this fleshly eyes see. You see into the supernatural. You see beyond your present, your present circumstances. You see life eternal. You see life everlasting. And if you used to preach life into someone else's life, you must be a person reflecting that life. You must be embodied and raptured by the Holy Spirit himself. You must be engaged day in and day out with a renewal of mind by Jesus Christ on a daily level. The path to righteousness, the path to eternal life is a consistent war. It's constant as Christ is constant. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. And if you become heirs and join heirs to the throne of God, then you will understand spiritually what eternal life means. You understand consistently the importance and engagement of a renewal mind day in and day out. How to worship how to pray, how to praise. You understand the elements of it. You understand the steps in it. You know how to, when to, what to do in its right moment and time. You see in the natural, you see in the spiritual. You see in a realm beyond the natural realm. You see into the supernatural realm with a spirit of discernment that God will give you. You can tell all things as they come by. You understand the engagement of spiritual warfare that consistently happens every single day, every single hour, every single minute, every single second of your life. The engagement of spiritual warfare is present around the children of God, but with a discerning spirit, know how to bind and how to loose. You make corrections at all given time, at every moment that the devil shows up. You are placed in a position to understand and feel the problems that your brothers and sisters are going through. And then you are in a position to bind and loose. Set them free from the captivity of sin, from the snares of the hell, breaking demons off their back, giving them freedom in the spirit of God, casting demons out, loosing, binding, all these things showing mercy and forgiveness becomes a part of your life. The same elements, the same things that Jesus Christ did in earth, you duplicate in the present time and season. Because the Christ that lived then is the Christ that living inside of you. His spirit is dwelling inside of you. And when his spirit dwell inside of you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is the kind of power and authority that God has given unto us. We no longer be in a position of ancient time when we say eye for eye in a tooth for a tooth. You know, you're at work and someone lie on you. You want to get back at their throat. Some of you probably want to go get a gun and start shooting down the place. Some of you schoolmates bully you on the internet, Facebook or whatever it is, or TikTok or something, and you want to find a way of getting back at them. And all this time Christ is saying, listen, all these things can go away. Or I can give you the endurance to withstand these things, the power and the ability to override these things, to reflect love, compassion, and grace, to stand tall in the middle of your trials and tribulations. The middle of being bullied, I can stand tall, reach out and touch Jesus Christ, bind every single demon that come up against me, reflecting the glory of God in heaven, in earth as it is in heaven, 
showing that Christ is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Showing that Christ is still the peacemaker. A man of love, grace, compassion, and mercy. These attributes we should be claiming to walk with in 2023. These reflect a new person, the ability to stand tall in the middle of your trials and tribulations and reflect the kingdom of God, reflect ambassadorship of God's kingdom, reflect his grace, reflect his compassion, reflect his peace, reflect his mercy, reflect his love. These things should not have an impact on our bodies our impact in our minds because the Holy Spirit will immunize you to these things. You will be immunized to sin. So when the sinful course of action comes up against you, you are already immune to it. It will not impact you spiritually. Therefore, if it don't impact you spiritually, it cannot move you physically. The spiritual body controls the physical man. The spiritual body, your soul, reflects who you are. And when you come to a juncture in your life that you can embrace God in his fullness, embrace his spirit, live above the natural, live in the supernatural, Walk in the earth, but live in the heavenlies. An ear and joint ear of God. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar kind of a people. When you can come to that place in your life, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are not just any person, but you are a born again, blood washed, anointed, appointed man or woman of the Holy Spirit. That's what every born again Christian, every born again believer should be striving for in this time and season. That we can walk in holiness and walk in purity. That we, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can give God all the praise without hindrance. That we know when we touch God from our hearts, that God releases back onto us his anointing that break yokes and destroy burdens. His anointing that brings freedom into people's life. His anointings that break chains. His anointing that shows grace, show love and mercy. This is what the world needs today. And 2023, you can be one of those carriers of God's love and God's grace. God's mercy, God's compassion, his peace, the harmony, reflecting a resurrected king, a lord of lords, a king of kings, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and who is to come. This is the hour of visitation. As we enter out 2022, usher in 2023 with the grace of God, his love, his compassion, his mercy. You can be tomorrow's saint. You can be tomorrow's conqueror. You can be tomorrow's deliverer, peacemaker, grace keeper. You can be a preserver in this earth. Just giving out to your brothers and sisters the love of God from the King of Kings and the Alpha and the Omega. Now eternal and most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for every single recipient of this word. I pray for the authorities of this land, from the Senate to the Congress, the judicial system, the President of the United States of America, Lord. I bring every single institution before you, I bring every believer before you, all your sons and daughters, from the lesbians to the gays, the transvestites, the who's, the that, the straight, the crooked. 
Lord, I bring them all before you, Lord, that you would release a double portion of your mercy and grace. And my altering touch that they will turn away from their ways and come to acknowledge you as their personal savior. That the constitution God, if for the first time, will start to reflect your glory. That the Senate and Congress, Lord, will be built with peacemakers, reflecting grace and love and mercy in this time and season. I pray that God, even for the immigration department, Lord, for the task they have upon their hand, Lord. I pray that, God, you will give them the grace and peace and mercy, the attention their God they need to deal with this time and season, to deal with every individual, Lord, prudently. Heavenly Father, I bring this nation before you. I also bring the members of Ukraine government before you, Lord. I bring the member, the leader of Russia before you in this time and season, Lord. I pray, dear God, for a ceasefire in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring your earth to a place of peace and restoration. Let your kingdom be glorified. Let your name be exalted. This I declare in 2022, Lord. And I pray that your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let peace begin. Let peace reign. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen.